Thank you. This may be the most important speech I've ever made. I want to provide an update on our ongoing efforts to expose the tremendous voter fraud and irregularities which took place during the ridiculously long November 3rd elections. We used to have what was called Election Day. Now we have election days, weeks and months, and lots of bad things happened during this ridiculous period of time, especially when you have to prove almost nothing to exercise our greatest privilege, the right to vote. As President, I have no higher duty than to defend the laws and the Constitution of the United States. That is why I am determined to protect our election system, which is now under coordinated assault and siege. For months leading up to the presidential election, we were warned that we should not declare a premature victory. We were told repeatedly that it would take weeks, if not months, to determine the winner, to count the absentee ballots, and to verify the results. My opponent was told to stay away from the election. Don't campaign. We don't need you. We've got it. This election is done. In fact, they were acting like they already knew what the outcome was going to be. They had it covered, and perhaps they did, very sadly for our country. It was all very, very strange. Within days after the election, we witnessed an orchestrated effort to anoint a winner, even while many key states were still being counted. The constitutional process must be allowed to continue. We are going to defend the honesty of the vote by ensuring that every legal ballot is counted and that no illegal ballot is counted. This is not just about honoring the votes of 74 million Americans who voted for me. It's about ensuring that Americans can have faith in this election and in all future elections. Today, I will detail some of the shocking irregularities, abuses, and fraud that have been revealed in recent weeks. But before laying out just a small portion of the evidence we have uncovered, and we have so much evidence, I want to explain the corrupt mail-in balloting scheme that Democrats systematically put into place that allowed voting to be altered, especially in swing states, which they had to win. They just didn't know that it was going to be that tough because we were leading in every swing state by so much far greater than they ever thought possible. While it has long been understood that the Democrat political machine engages in voter fraud from Detroit to Philadelphia to Milwaukee, Atlanta, so many other places, what changed this year was the Democrat Party's relentless push to print and mail out tens of millions of ballots sent to unknown recipients with virtually no safeguards of any kind. This allowed fraud and abuse to occur on a scale never seen before. Using the pandemic as a pretext, Democrat politicians and judges drastically changed election procedures just months and, in some cases, weeks before the election on the 3rd of November. Very rarely were legislatures involved, and constitutionally, they had to be involved. But very, very rarely, and you'll see that as we continue to file our suits, it's constitutionally absolutely incorrect what took place, even from a legal standpoint. Many states, such as Nevada and California, sent millions of live ballots to every person on their voter rolls. Whether those individuals had requested ballots or not, whether they were dead or alive, they got ballots. Other states, such as Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin, instituted universal absentee balloting right in the middle of an election year, sending absentee ballot request forms to all voters on all rolls. It didn't matter who they were. This colossal expansion of mail-in voting opened the floodgates to massive fraud. It's a widely known fact that the voting rolls are packed with people who are not lawfully eligible to vote, including those who are deceased, 
have moved out of their state and even are non-citizens of our country. Beyond this, the records are riddled with errors, wrong addresses, duplicate entries, and many other issues. This is not disputed. It has never been disputed. Dozens of counties in the key swing states have more registered voters on the rolls than they have voting-age citizens, including 67 counties in Michigan. All of this is evidence. In Wisconsin, the state's Board of Elections could not confirm the residency of more than 100,000 people, but repeatedly refused to remove those names from its voter rolls before the election. They knew why nobody else did. I knew why. They're illegal voters. It is a travesty that in the year 2020, we do not have any means of verifying the eligibility of those who cast ballots in an election, and such an important election it is, or determining who they are, whether they live in the state, or whether they are even American citizens. We have no idea. We have, in all swing states, major infractions or outright fraud, which is far more in numbers or votes than we need to overturn the results of a state. In other words, in Wisconsin, as an example, where we were way up on election night, they ultimately had us miraculously losing by 20,000 votes. And I can show you right here that Wisconsin, we're leading by a lot. And then at 3.42 in the morning, there was this. It was a massive dump of votes, mostly Biden, almost all Biden. And to this day, everyone's trying to figure out, where did it come from? But I went from leading by a lot to losing by a little. And that's right here. That's at 3.42 in the morning. That's Wisconsin. A terrible thing. Terrible, terrible thing. But we will have far more, many times more, than the 20,000 votes needed to overturn the state. If we are right about the fraud, Joe Biden can't be president. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of votes we're talking about numbers like nobody has ever seen before. Just as an example, in certain states, we'll be down by, let's say, 7,000 votes. But we'll find later on 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 discrepancies or fraudulent votes. And that includes votes that went through when they were not allowed to be seen by Republican poll watchers, because the poll watchers were locked out of the building. Or people that innocently came to vote on November 3rd, who were all excited about their vote. They were happy. They were proud to be citizens of the United States of America. And they went up and they said, I'd like to vote. And they were told that they can't vote. I'm sorry. They were told, I'm sorry, you've already voted by mail-in ballot. Congratulations. We received a ballot so you can no longer vote. They didn't know what to do. They had no one to complain to. Most just left and said, that's strange. But many people complained and complained vehemently. And in a lot of cases, they filled out a provisional ballot, which was almost never used, but in virtually every case was a vote for Trump. In other words, they went in to vote, and they were told that they voted. And they didn't vote. And they left, and they felt horror. And they lost respect for our system. And this happened tens of thousands of times all over the country. That's how desperate the Democrats were. They would fill out ballots 
of people, not even knowing if these people were going to show up. And when they did show up, they said, sorry, you've already voted. And on top of everything else, we have a company that's very suspect. Its name is Dominion. With the turn of a dial or the change of a chip, you can press a button for Trump and the vote goes to Biden. What kind of a system is this? We have to go to paper. Maybe it takes longer. But the only secure system is paper, not these systems that nobody understands, including, in many cases, the people that run them. Although, unfortunately, I think they understand them far too well. In one Michigan county, as an example, that used Dominion systems, they found that nearly 6,000 votes had been wrongly switched from Trump to Biden. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is what we caught. How many didn't we catch? Are there hundreds of other examples throughout the country? Are there thousands? We just got lucky, and they called it a glitch. But we found numerous glitches that evening. 96% of the company's political donations went to Democrats, not surprisingly. And frankly, when you look at who's running the company, who's in charge, who owns it, which we don't know, where are the votes counted, which we think are counted in foreign countries, not in the United States? Dominion is a disaster. Election authorities in Texas have repeatedly blocked the deployment of Dominion systems due to concerns about security vulnerabilities and the potential for errors and outright fraud. Every district that uses Dominion systems must be carefully monitored and carefully investigated, but not only for the future. Right now, we're worried about the present and what went on with an election that we won without question. Under my lead, the Republicans won almost every state house in the United States, which they weren't expected to do. We won up to 16 seats in the House. The numbers are still being tabulated because there are nine seats that nobody really knows. They don't know. They're still, two weeks later, still under consideration because it's a mess. Republicans were supposed to lose many seats, and instead they won those seats in the House. And a very important election that's coming up will determine whether or not we hold the Senate David Perdue and Kelly Leffler are two tremendous people. Unfortunately, in Georgia, they're using the same horrible Dominion system. And it's already been out that hundreds of thousands — think of it — hundreds of thousands of absentee ballots have been requested. You check it out, who's requesting those ballots? The difference is, it's one state, and we will have our eyes on it like nobody's ever watched anything before, because we have to win those two Senate seats. The tremendous success we had in the House of Representatives and the tremendous success we've had so far in the Senate, unexpected success all over the country and right here in Washington, it is statistically impossible that the person, me, that led the charge lost. The greatest pollsters, the real pollsters, not the ones that had us down 17 points in Wisconsin when we actually won, or the ones that had us down four or five points in Florida and we won by many points, or had us even and down in Texas and we won by a lot. Not those pollsters, but real pollsters, pollsters that are fair and honest, said, we can't understand a thing like this. It's never happened before. You led the country to victory, and you were the only one that was lost. It's not possible. The Speaker of the House of a certain state said, sir, I expected to lose my seat, and instead, because of you, and because of that incredible charge and all of those rallies, 
We had a tremendous victory, and everybody knows it. You were much more popular than me, sir, except I got many more votes than you did. And it's impossible that that happened. There is something wrong. I'll tell you what's wrong. Voter fraud. Here's an example. This is Michigan. At 6.31 in the morning, a vote dump of 149,772 votes came in unexpectedly. We were winning by a lot. That batch was received in horror. Nobody knows anything about it. By the way, there's your line. This is one of many. Here's what is normal. And all of a sudden, look at that. This is normal, normal. Look, even here, normal. And then, boom, all of a sudden, I go from winning by a lot to losing a tight race. It's corrupt. Detroit is corrupt. I have a lot of friends in Detroit. They know it. But Detroit is totally corrupt. Look at this. Look at this. That's at 6.31 in the morning. Unexpectedly came in. In the recent recount in Georgia, which means nothing because they don't want to check signatures. And if you're not going to check signatures in Georgia, it doesn't work. But we have a Secretary of State and a Governor who made it very difficult to check signatures. Why? You'll have to ask them. But without a signature match or check, it doesn't matter. They found thousands and thousands of votes that were out of whack, all against me. This was during a recount that I didn't even think mattered. They found many thousands of votes. And that recount didn't matter. The one that matters is the one that's going on now. That because of the fact it's so close, they had to, by law, give another recount. But the recount has to be a recount where they check the signatures. Otherwise, they're just checking the same dishonest thing. It won't matter. In this case, the signatures on envelopes are the only thing that is relevant. We will compare the signature on the envelope to the signatures from past elections, and we will find that many thousands of people signed these ballots illegally. The Democrats had this election rigged right from the beginning. They used the pandemic, sometimes referred to as the China virus, where it originated, as an excuse to mail out tens of millions of ballots, which ultimately led to a big part of the fraud, a fraud that the whole world is watching. And there is no one happier right now than China. Many people received two, three, and four ballots. They were sent to dead people by the thousands. In fact, dead people, and we have many examples, filled out ballots, made applications, and then voted, which is even worse. In other words, dead people went through a process. Some have been dead for 25 years. Millions of votes were cast illegally in the swing states alone. And if that's the case, the results of the individual swing states must be overturned and overturned immediately. Some people say that's too far out. That's too harsh. Well, does that mean we take a president and we've just elected a president where the votes were fraudulent? No, it means you have to turn over the election. And everybody knows, without going much further, and they've seen the evidence, but they don't want to talk about it, what a disaster this election was a total catastrophe. But we're going to show it, and hopefully the courts in particular, the Supreme Court of the United States will see it. And respectfully, hopefully they will do what's right for our country. Because our country cannot live with this kind of an election. We could say, let's go on to the next one. But no, we have to look also at our past. We can't let this happen. Maybe you'll have a revote, but I don't think that's appropriate. When those votes are corrupt, when they're irregular, when they get caught,
They're terminated. And I very easily win in all states. I very easily win these swing states, just like I won them at 10 o'clock in the evening, the evening of the election. So we're not looking to show you 25 faulty or fraudulent votes, which don't mean anything because it doesn't overturn the state, or 50 or 100. We're showing you hundreds of thousands, far more than we need, far more than the margin, far more than the law requires. We can show many times what is necessary to win the state. The media knows this, but they don't want to report it. In fact, they outright refuse to even cover it because they know the result if they do. Even what I'm saying now will be demeaned and disparaged, but that's okay. I just keep on going forward because I'm representing 74 million people. And in fact, I'm also representing all of the people that didn't vote for me. The mail-in voting scam is the latest part of their four-year effort to overturn the results of the 2016 election. And it's been like living in hell. Our opponents have proven many times, again and again, that they will say and do anything to get back into power. The corrupt forces who are registering dead voters and stuffing ballot boxes are the same people who have perpetrated one phony and fraudulent hoax after another. You've been watching it now for four years. These entrenched interests oppose our movement because we put America first. They don't put America first. And we're returning power to you, the American people. They don't want America first. They only want power for themselves. They want to make money. That's why they don't want me as your president. I've been investigated from soon after I announced I was running for president, when I immediately went to number one in the Republican primary polls. The investigations never stopped. They went on for four years. And I won them all. I beat them all. Russia, Russia, Russia. The impeachment hoax, and so much more. Robert Mueller spent $48 million of taxpayer money investigating me for two and a half years, issued over 2,800 subpoenas, executed nearly 500 search warrants, issued 230 orders for communications records, and conducted 500 witness interviews, all looking to take me down. There was no collusion in the end, none whatsoever. Senator Marco Rubio, the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee, stated the committee found no evidence that then-candidate Donald Trump or his campaign colluded with the Russian government. And I thank Senator Rubio for that statement. Now I hear that these same people that failed to get me in Washington have sent every piece of information to New York so that they can try to get me there. It's all been gone over, over and over again. For $48 million, you go through tax returns, you go through everything. The New York Attorney General, who recently ran for office, campaigned without knowing me, stating, we will join with law enforcement and other attorneys general across this nation in removing this president from office. I never met her. It's important that everybody understand, she said, that the days of Donald Trump are coming to an end. And all it's been is a big investigation in Washington and New York and any place else that can investigate because that's what they want to do. They want to take not me, but us down. And we can never let them do that. Everything has been looked at. A friend of mine who's very smart said, you've probably seen more than anybody else. You've probably been investigated more than anybody else. And for you to come out with a clean bill of health makes you probably the cleanest person in this country. Some people in this administration but fortunately, not all 
have been beaten down and disparaged. They just disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to them. Why aren't they active? Why aren't they involved? There's so much to be involved in. The corruption is so rampant. They just couldn't take it anymore. They were threatened by Democrats with impeachment, and horrible things were said about them, and they're good people. Even recently, the head of the GSA was hounded and harassed, as she reported, like she has never been before. What can I say? We caught Comey cold. We caught McCabe cold. We caught them all. We're still waiting for a report from a man named Durham, who I have never spoken to and I have never met. They can go after me before the election as much as they want. But unfortunately, Mr. Durham didn't want to go after these people or have anything to do with going after them before the election. So who knows if he is ever going to even do a report. But if you look at the lies and the leaks and the illegal acts and behavior done by so many people in their desire to hurt the President of the United States, something should happen. The hardest thing I have to do is explain why nothing is happening with all of these people that got caught spying on my campaign. It's never happened before, and it should never happen again to a President of the United States. All you have to do is watch the hearings and see for yourself the evidence is overwhelming. The fraud that we've collected in recent weeks is overwhelming, having to do with our election. Everyone is saying, wow, the evidence is overwhelming when they get to see it. But really, it's too late to change the course of an election. It's too late to change the outcome. In fact, there is still plenty of time to certify the correct winner of the election. And that's what we're fighting to do. But no matter when it happens, when they see fraud, when they see false votes, and when those votes number far more than is necessary, you can't let another person steal that election from you. All over the country, people are together in holding up signs, stop the steal. To understand how we will challenge this fraud, it is important to know the problems with mail-in balloting. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Nevada, Georgia, Arizona, and most other states allowed anyone to get an absentee ballot and cast their vote without showing any ID. The voting took place entirely on the honor system. No identification of any kind was required. Most Americans would also be shocked to learn that no state in the country verifies United States citizenship as a condition for voting in federal elections. This is a national disgrace. No other advanced country conducts elections this way. Many European countries have instituted major restrictions on mail-in voting specifically because they recognize the nearly unlimited potential for fraud. Out of 42 European nations, all but two prohibit absentee ballots entirely for people who reside inside the country or else they require those who need absentee ballots to show a very, very powerful ID. Throughout the Democrat effort to dramatically expand mail-in voting, the Democrat Party leaders were also feverishly working to block measures designed to protect against fraud, such as signature verification, residency verification, or voter ID, and citizenship Confirmation was almost unthought of that we should ask for it. Can you believe this? These are not the actions of people who want fair elections. These are the actions of people who want to steal elections, who are willing to create fraud. The only conceivable reason why you would block common-sense measures to verify legal eligibility for voting is you are trying to encourage, enable, solicit, or carry out fraud.
It is important for Americans to understand that these destructive changes to our election laws were not a necessary response to the pandemic. The pandemic simply gave the Democrats an excuse to do what they have been trying to do for many, many years. In fact, the very first bill that House Democrats introduced when Nancy Pelosi became Speaker was an attempt to mandate universal mail-in voting and eliminate measures such as voter ID, which is so necessary. Dramatically eroding the integrity of our elections was the Democrats' number one priority for a simple reason. They wanted to steal the 2020 presidential election. All of the Democrat efforts to expand mail-in balloting laid the groundwork for the systematic and pervasive fraud that occurred in this election. In Pennsylvania, large amounts of mail-in and absentee ballots were processed illegally and in secret in Philadelphia and Allegheny counties without our observers present. They were not allowed to be present. In fact, they weren't even allowed in the same room. They were thrown out of the building, and they looked from outside in, but they had no way of even seeing because there were no windows, and the windows that were there were boarded up. Democrats even went to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to block observers from receiving access. There is only one possible reason that the corrupt Democrat political machine would oppose transparency during the vote counting. It's because they know they are hiding illegal activity. It's very simple. This is an egregious, inexcusable, and irreversible harm that stains the entire election. Yet this unprecedented practice of excluding our observers, our vote watchers, as some people call them, occurred in Democrat-run cities and key states all across the nation. Here are just some of the additional facts that we've uncovered. Many voters all across Pennsylvania received two ballots in the mail, and many others received mail-in ballots for which they never applied. So many got ballots, they didn't even know what they were for. And again, so many received more than one ballot, in some cases, more than two ballots. And they happened to be, for the most part, Democrats. In Fayette County, Pennsylvania, multiple voters received ballots that were already filled out. They didn't know what happened. In Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, a poll watcher overheard unregistered voters being told to return later to try to vote under a different name. Tens of thousands of voters across Pennsylvania were treated differently based on whether they were Republicans or Democrats. Voters who submitted flawed ballots in some Democrat precincts were notified and asked to fix their ballots, while Republican precincts, and in particular, Republican voters, were not so notified, which plainly violates the Equal Protection Clause of the United States Constitution. If you are a Democrat, we're going to fix up your ballot, make sure it's perfect. If you are a Republican, don't even talk about it. In Michigan, a career employee of the city of Detroit witnessed city workers coaching voters to vote straight Democrat while accompanying them to watch who they were voting for, violating the law and the sanctity of the secret ballot. You can't do that. The same worker says she was instructed not to ask for any ID and not to attempt to validate any signatures. She was also told to illegally backdate ballots, many, many ballots, received after the deadline. This is something that is so unconstitutional. And she estimates that thousands and thousands of ballots were improperly backdated by her and many others. Other witnesses in Detroit also saw election officials counting batches of the same ballots many times as well as illegally duplicating ballots. One observer testified to seeing boxes and boxes of ballots, all bearing the same signature. Another observer in Detroit gave sworn testimony that he saw countless invalid ballots that did not belong to properly registered voters, and then witnessed election workers in Wayne County entering fake birth dates into the system in order to illegally count them. Witnesses have signed sworn affidavits. In other words, you go to jail if you lie. 
testifying that after election officials announced the last absentee votes had been received, a batch of tens of thousands of ballots arrived, many without envelopes, all voting for Democrats. In Wisconsin, a record number of voters were categorized as indefinitely confined, a status reserved for severely disabled individuals, also for the elderly that allow them to vote without showing ID. Last year, approximately 70,000 people claimed this status statewide. This year, the number miraculously was nearly 250,000 voters after election officials in Milwaukee and Dane counties, a couple of the most corrupt political places in our country, urged citizens to improperly register under this status. And register they did in levels that don't exist. In Wisconsin, there are approximately 70,000 absentee ballots that do not have matching ballot applications as required by law. In Georgia, nine observers have testified to seeing countless irregular ballots without the creases or typical markings indicating that the ballots did not arrive in envelopes as required. A poll watcher in Fulton County estimated that approximately 98 percent of the large number of unusually pristine ballots that she witnessed were for Biden, a highly unusual number. In addition, thousands of uncounted ballots were discovered in Floyd, Fayette, and Walton counties weeks after the election. And these ballots were mostly from Trump voters. They weren't counted. They were from Trump voters. In Detroit, everybody saw the tremendous conflict and the horrible way that the two Republican canvassers were treated so horribly because they wouldn't vote when they saw that 71 percent of the precincts didn't balance. And also, there were more votes than there were voters. Think of that. You had more votes than you had voters. That's an easy one to figure. And spy the thousands. In Arizona, in-person voters whose ballots produced error messages from tabulation machines were told to press a button that resulted in their votes not being counted. Also in Arizona, the Attorney General announced that mail-in ballots had been stolen from mailboxes and hidden under a rock. In Clark County, Nevada, where most of the state's voters reside, the standards for matching a signature using the signature verification machine were intentionally lowered to allow large numbers of ballots to be counted that otherwise would never have passed muster. This machine was set at the lowest level. According to one report, in order to test the process, nine voters in Clark County cast ballots with intentionally incorrect signatures and eight of the nine ballots were accepted and counted. They said you could sign your name as Santa Claus and it would be accepted. Last week, the Clark County Commission threw out the results of a local election after the registrar reported finding, quote, discrepancies that we can't explain. Also in Nevada, some voters were entered into a raffle for more than a dozen gift cards worth as much as $250 if they could prove they had voted. This took place on Indian reservations. One of the most significant indications of widespread fraud is the extraordinarily low rejection rates for mail-in ballots in many key states. These are the states that I had to win. In swing state after swing state, the number of ballots rejected has been dramatically lower than what would have been expected based on prior experience. That means years and years of voting. In Georgia, just 0.2 percent — that's substantially less than 1 percent — of mail-in ballots have been rejected. In other words, almost none have been rejected. They took everything. Nothing was rejected, practically, compared to 6.4 percent in 2016, and there are those that think that 6.4 was a low number. So think of it. Almost none were rejected. And the previous election, 6.4 percent were rejected. 
We have seen similar declines in Pennsylvania, Nevada, and Michigan. Ballots weren't rejected, especially if they happen to be in Democrat areas. These irregularities are inexplicable unless there is a deliberate effort to accept ineligible ballots or fraudulent ballots. In Pennsylvania, the Secretary of State and the State Supreme Court, in essence, abolished signature verification requirements just weeks prior to the election in violation of state law. You're not allowed to do that. It has to be approved by the legislature. A judge can't do it. A state can't do it. An official can't do it. The only one that can do it is the legislature. The reason for this is clear. They were not verifying signatures because they know the ballots have not been filled out by the voters in whose names they were cast. In other words, people filled them out that had nothing to do with the names of the ballot. A simple recount of the ballots under these circumstances only compounds the fraud. The only way to determine whether there was an honest vote is to conduct a full review of the envelopes in the relevant states. You will find that many of them, tens of thousands, have fraudulent signatures. A full forensic audit is required to ensure that only legal ballots from lawfully registered voters that were properly cast are included in the final count. This election is about great voter fraud, fraud that has never been seen like this before. It's about poll watchers who were not allowed to watch. So illegal. It's about ballots that poured in, and nobody but a few knew where they came from. But they were counted, and they weren't for me. It's about big leads on election night, tremendous leads, leads where I was being congratulated for a decisive, easy victory. And all of a sudden, by morning or a couple of days later, those leads rapidly evaporated. It's about numbers of ballots that were sent that nobody know where they came from. It's about machinery that was defective, machinery that was stopped during certain parts of the evening, miraculously to open with more votes. It was about many other things. But above all, it was about fraud. This election was rigged. Everybody knows it. I don't mind if I lose an election, but I want to lose an election fair and square. What I don't want to do is have it stolen from the American people. That's what we're fighting for, and we have no choice to be doing that. We already have the proof. We already have the evidence, and it's very clear. Many people in the media, and even judges so far, have refused to accept it. They know it's true. They know it's there. They know who won the election. But they refuse to say, you're right. Our country needs somebody to say, you're right. Ultimately, I am prepared to accept any accurate election result. And I hope that Joe Biden is as well. But we already have the proof. We already have tens of thousands of ballots more than we need to overturn all of these states that we're talking about. This is an election for the highest office in the greatest country in the history of the world. Every reasonable American should be able to agree, based on what we have already documented, that we need a systematic analysis of the mail-in ballots to review the envelopes. It's about the signature. And if they're on the envelopes, we can only review the envelopes. And that will tell us everything. This is the absolute minimum we should expect. This is not just about my campaign, although it has a lot to do with who's going to be your next president. This is about restoring faith and confidence in American elections. This is about our democracy and the sacred rights that generations of Americans have fought, bled, and died to secure. Nothing is more urgent or more important. The only ballots that should count in this election are those cast by eligible voters who are citizens of our country, residents of the states in which they voted, and who cast their ballots in a lawful manner before the legal deadline.
Moreover, we must never again have an election in which there is not a reliable and transparent system to verify the eligibility, identity, and residency of every single person who casts a ballot, a very, very cherished ballot. Many very smart people have congratulated me on all we've done. The biggest tax cuts in history, regulation cuts, the biggest in history. We rebuilt our military. We took care of our vets like never before. Space Force and so much more. But then they went on to say, as big and as important as these events were, the single greatest achievement in your presidency will be exactly what you're doing right now. Voter integrity for our nation. It's more important than any of the things that we discussed. If we don't root out the fraud, the tremendous and horrible fraud that's taken place in our 2020 election, we don't have a country anymore. So with the resolve and support of the American people, we will restore honesty and integrity to our elections, and we will restore trust in our system of government. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless America.